Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome to my lab and today we're counting down the 10 things you should buy for your crested gecko. I put together a list of 10 things that I think every gecko keeper should have. I went out and bought all 10 of these items and I'm going to show them to you today. There's also links in the description on where you can buy each of these items. If you see one you like, click on the link and you can purchase it right there. Now let's get started with the first thing on today's list. Alright guys, the first item on today's list is the cage. Obviously, the most important thing for every gecko keeper is somewhere to keep your gecko. Now this is the Exoterra 12x12x18 by 12 by inch cage. Exoterra and Zoomed both make very similar cages, just like this glass cage with the front opening doors. I prefer the Exoterra myself, the Zoomed are also very good. This side cage, the 12x12x18, 12 by 12 by is perfect for up to one adult gecko. It's a little on the small side for one adult gecko, but anything more than one adult, you're going to need a bigger cage. So this is the first item, getting a good solid cage. Best thing you can get for your gecko right here. Now let's talk about what else you're going to need. All right, the second thing on today's list is food. Now this may seem kind of simple, but it's really not. There's a lot of different gecko diets out there, and it's important to get a good diet to keep your gecko healthy. Now if you want to know everything about gecko foods, check out our complete gecko food review video. In that video, I got my hands on every different kind of gecko food I could, reviewed all of them, and kind of talk about which ones are good, which ones are bad, what you should feed, what you shouldn't feed. It's a complete breakdown. Now real quick, there's three brands of food that I consider complete diets that you should feed your geckos, your main staple of food. You have your Pangea, your Rapashi, and your Black Panther Zoological. They all come in a whole bunch of different flavors. I'm not going to get too much in them right now. We've got banana, apricot, apricot with insects, watermelon, mango, breeding formula, the Black Panther Color Bomb, Black Panther Original, Black Panther Melanistic, Rapashi Classic, Rapashi Gecko Diet, Rapashi Grubs and Fruit, and Rapashi Mango Super Blend. As you can see, you've got a lot of options, a lot of different flavors. Any of these are great options to feed your geckos, and don't forget, there's links in the description to buy each and every one of these and each and every product on this list, so check them out. I'm trying to make it real easy for you guys to get everything you need for your animals. Alright, number three on our gecko shopping list. You got your cage and you got your food. How are you going to feed your geckos? I highly recommend a magnetic elevated feeding dish. These are great for those glass cages we looked at, the Exoterras or the Zoomeds. This one is the ultimate feeding dish. It comes with two cups. Each of these holes holds a 1.5 ounce portion cup. They're reusable, recyclable, cheap. These stick to the side of your cage with, as you can see, very strong magnets. So you just put this on the inside of the cage, slide this magnet up the outside, and it holds it right there. One of these will hold any kind of gecko you're going to put in any of these cages. These things will hold a full-grown Leechianas. They're incredibly strong. They're going to stay put. It gives your gecko a nice elevated feeding platform. The biggest advantage of that is the geckos don't walk through the food in these. So they don't get food stuck on their feet. Their feet don't get dried up. They don't have shedding issues. Wonderful. I highly recommend one of these for feeding your geckos. Alright guys, so now we've got a cage. We've got good quality food. We've got an elevated feeding platform. Next up, substrate. Now this is EcoWorth. You can buy this either in the compressed block form or in a loose substrate bag. The block form, you soak this in water, it expands and softens, and EcoEarth is compressed coconut fiber. There's a couple different brands of this, but it's all basically the same thing. I love this stuff. Now personally, I use newspapers for the substrate in our geckos. That's only because I've got so many of them, it's not really an option to use this. I do use this, however, in our lay boxes. We mix this 50-50 with sand, and it's absolutely great for lay boxes, and I love it for substrate. The whole bottom of the cage, it holds the humidity so well, which is key for your geckos. Lots of humidity, holds it in good, low impaction risk, eco-worth. Great stuff for your cage. So now you've got a cage, food, substrate, everything's looking good. What do you need next? A hide for your gecko. Now this is the Reptile Cave by Exoterra. I like this one in particular. They make this in a few different sizes. I believe this is the medium that I ordered here. Now I like this reptile cave because as you can see, it's very low to the ground. 
Now a lot of people think because crested geckos are arboreal, they live in the trees, that they won't hide on the ground, but that's not necessarily true. In the wild, crested geckos don't live very high up in the trees. That's kind of a myth. They live anywhere from ground level up to about six feet. They don't get very high off the ground, and they will hide on the ground if they've got a good place. I like these because they're very low. To make your gecko feel secure, they need small, tight hiding spaces. That's what makes them feel safe. The smaller the space, the less chance a predator is going to get in there after them. That's what's going through their minds when they're looking for a hiding space. Low to the ground, slim line hides like this. Perfect. It will help your gecko have somewhere safe and comfortable to hide. Absolutely love these reptile caves right here. Alright, next up we have plants. Now your reptile, your gecko is not always going to want to hide in the hide on the ground and they need stuff to climb on. They need stuff to get up to the top of their cage and explore. That's where the plants come in. I got two different kinds here. One is Fluker's Pothos Vines. Now I'm going to open this guy up so we can have a better look at it. This one I like because it's a longer vine. Sorry, they got it all tied up on me here. Oh no, I lost one of the suction cups. Let me just pull these twisty ties off here. Like I said, this one I like because it's a longer vine and it comes with a couple suction cups. I dropped them on the ground, but it comes with several of these. And as you can see, it's a very long vine. So this guy can actually twist and twine all the way around in your cage. You can stretch all the way across the cage to give the gecko something to climb across. This is just great. Big leaves for them to hide in and a couple of suction cups that come with it. So you can stick these right on the inside of your cage, loop your vines over it, twist it back and forth. Great. This will really help fill up that empty space in the cage. A lot of times you get a lot of dead space in the top of the cage. This is a great way to fill it up and help your geckos out. Now I also have here Exoterra Jungle Plant. This is the large version. They make a small, medium, a large, and I think they actually make an extra large that's even bigger. I got a large one just because I figured it would be easier to see on the video. Now I like this guy because it provides great hiding space. Now this only has one suction cup on the back and it just clips right onto your cage anywhere. And even with a bigger cage than this, you can see this one's trailing onto the ground here. Even with a bigger cage, this one, especially back in the corner, provides great coverage, a lot of space behind the plant or in the plant for the geckos to hide. They feel covered and secure, lots of space to climb on, and these are easy to wash and easy to sanitize. That's a big thing. A lot of people will go get plants from Hobby Lobby or Michaels or something like that, and they're just not made for reptiles. They're not made of plastic. They're hard to sanitize. When you wash them, the dye from the leaves will bleed out and all the water turns green, that's just not good for your reptiles. You want a good plastic reptile based plant. These are two of my favorites. Great for your geckos and very safe. Pick a couple of these up. Okay, so you got plants covered now and that gives them some space to climb, but they really need more than that. That's where the jungle vine comes in. Now this is the large size. Again, they make several different sizes and the jungle vine is a bendy, shapeable vine that is perfect for geckos. You can bend it into pretty much any shape you want, as you can see, and it'll hold that shape. Now, I love these. I love to get some extra suction cups. Any hardware store will carry them. Put some suction cups in the cage, and you can bend this guy all around, crisscross it, make a couple different walkways around the cage. It's another great way to fill up all that empty vertical space. It's perfect to hang these things up and then drape the vines over them. Gives your geckos a nice rough surface to rub on if they need help getting their shed off. Wonderful, wonderful things. The bendy vines here. The jungle vine by Exoterra. I would definitely pick up one of these. Like I said, they come in a lot of different sizes. Have a look at them. Great addition to your cage. Your gecko's going to love it. Next up, we have this portable pressure sprayer. Now, a sprayer of some kind is absolutely essential for keeping the humidity in your gecko's cage up. They need higher humidity levels to help them shed and keep them healthy. Any spray bottle will do, but I've always hated the traditional trigger spray bottles because, for one, the trigger mechanisms are never very sturdy. They never last long. Even when I go to hardware stores and buy the professional grade, heavy duty, yada yadas, they just don't last very long. The sprayer mechanisms just break. And it gets kind of be a pain having to pull the trigger 
this is just a much simpler solution. The pressure strayer has a pump on the top. It pumps air into the tank, pressurizes it, and then as soon as you push the button, it sprays the water out with the pressure. It's so much easier to use and they last so much longer. It's worth it to get one of these. They will last you forever. I've had these last for a long time before. Perfect, much better than the traditional spray bottle. And like I said, you have to have one of these to keep the humidity up. So why not do it right and get the pressure sprayer? All right, we're getting down towards the end of the list. And at number nine, we have the Repti Shelter. These caves are great for a number of things. First off, they work perfect if you're breeding your geckos. The females have to have a good, secure place to go lay their eggs, and these work perfect. Now this is the small size. They make two larger sizes, and if you're breeding, I would pick one of the larger ones to lay eggs in. I just got the small one, and this works great as a humid hide as well. So even if you're not breeding your geckos, and you don't use the EcoEarth, the EcoEarth helps keep the humidity up in your cage. Well, if you're not using this for substrate and you use paper towels or newspapers like I do, you've got to have a humid hide so your geckos have somewhere humid to go when they're getting ready to shed to help them get that skin off. This works perfect. Just a small cave, a nice hole they can climb through. You put a little bit of the EcoEarth or some sphagnum moss or anything like that in here. Keep it damp. It gives them a nice, cool, damp spot to go hide. It's very secure, they feel very safe in here, but it's also easy to just pop the top off, see if your gecko's in there, if you're breeding, see if there's any eggs in there without picking the whole thing up and disturbing it, maybe dropping it. It's just great. These things work so well. I highly recommend you get one of these. Your gecko's really going to appreciate it. All right, guys, we're down to the end of the list, and at number 10, we need to talk about cleaning. You spent all this time putting this beautiful cage together, making a great home for your gecko. Now you need to keep it clean. This is my favorite cleaning product. This is the Fluker's All-Natural Cleaning and Disinfectant Bottle. My favorite thing about this is the scrub brush on the top. That is great for these glass cages. Now, another reason I like this cleaning bottle is it's all-natural, all-organic, no chemicals, no harsh cleanals. It uses natural enzymes. It's great. It's perfectly safe. You can clean your cage while your gecko is still in there. It's not going to harm them. There's none of this. Take the cage apart and bleach it and worry about the bleach all drying or using any other harsh chemicals to disinfect it. This is all you need right here. And the built-in scrub brush on the top. We all know that your geckos climb up the side of the glass and then they poop on the side of the glass and it all gets dried and you end up trying to scrub it off. It's all built into the bottle right here. Scrub the cage with the bottle, clean it off, natural disinfectant. This is perfect. Everybody who's got a glass cage should have one of these. All right guys, there it is. Everything you need to keep your gecko happy, healthy, and create a beautiful, safe home for them. Don't forget, there's links in the description to buy every one of these items. So it's real easy for you guys. If you see something you're missing or something you wanna to add to your cage, click on the link. Pick one up, I guarantee you're not going to regret it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe our channel. Share this video with your friends. Click over here to see some more videos that we've posted in the past. And click over here to visit our website. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.